Now we're going to begin our study of what people formally call the trigonometric functions. This is the beginning of trigonometry. So let me give you a brief introduction. And this is related to section 1.3. So you have special properties of similar triangles and right triangles. And together with these two kinds of triangles, we can create six special interrelated functions that'll help us describe, compare, calculate with angles of any size or position. So imagine you have a point X, Y in the plane, any point, just not the point at the origin. That point determines a ray it determines the terminal side of an angle in standard position. Let's call that angle theta. By the distance formula, that point is a positive distance away from the origin. We can calculate that distance r with the Pythagorean theorem. But these three numbers, x, y, and r, they can create six different ratios y to r, x to r, r to y, r to x, y to x, x to y. And these six different ratios are called the trigonometric functions of the angle theta. So what people call the sine of theta, they write sin theta is the ratio of y to r. Cosine of theta, people abbreviate cos theta cos theta is the ratio of x to r. The tangent of theta, people abbreviate tan theta, tan theta, is the ratio of y to x. And then three other ratios that are reciprocals of the first three. The cosecant of theta, which people abbreviate c s c theta, that's the reciprocal of sine theta. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. Instead of x over r, you write r over x. You abbreviate secant theta, sec theta. And finally, the cotangent of theta, cot theta, cotangent theta, you pronounce it is the ratio of x to y. Now the names of these have particular meaning historically, and we'll tell you where the names came from. But right now, I just want to practice making you see the ratios. See these three ratios, see their three reciprocals, and identify functions that are reciprocals of each other. Sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, tangent and cotangent. So you see that these six values represent every possible ratio of x, y, and r. If I give you the three numbers x, y, and r, you form every possible ratio you can, you get these six ratios. Let's practice using it. If I gave you the point three and two, which is the square root of 13 units away, from the origin, and you could form these six ratios. The sine is y over r, two over root 18. The cosine is x over r, three over root 13. Tangent is y over x, two over three. And the cosecant is r over y, root 13 over two. Or you could just say, I'll take the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, root 13 over three. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. It would be three over two. So from a point which determines an angle in standard position, I can name all six ratios. I could also name all six ratios if I was given a formal angle. So look at the angle 225 degrees, which lands us right in the middle between 
180 degrees and 270 degrees, literally 45 degrees from either one of those axes. Well, that gives me the name of a point. I can name many points on here, but because of similar triangles, I get the same ratios each time I work. This could name the point minus three and minus three. And then I could work out the radius, the distance from there to there, once I've named that point, minus three squared plus minus three squared. And that's nine plus nine, square root of 18. And since 18 is nine times two, that's three times the square root of two. Now I can form all the possible ratios in this image. The sine is the ratio of y to r, so minus three over three root two. The cosine is the ratio of x to r, it's also minus three over three root two. But both of those can be simplified. It's a little crowded here, I apologize. Minus one over root two, minus one over root two. Tangent is the ratio of y to x, minus three to minus three, but that's the same as one. And now for the three reciprocal functions, the reciprocal of minus one over root two is minus root two. For secant, the reciprocal of cosine is also minus root two. For cotangent, the reciprocal of one, one over one, is still one. So whether someone names an angle and I identify a point on there to build the ratios, or whether someone identifies a point and I use that to build the ratios directly, Every time we place an angle in standard position, I can form these six ratios. So your job is anytime someone gives you a point other than the origin or any angle in standard position, you're able to create those six ratios. Notice that all six of those values could be positive, it could be negative, it could be zero, based on the position of the point in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrant. You count the quadrants of the plane from the positive first quadrant, where both x and y are positive, then you go counterclockwise around and you name the second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. Get used to those names because you're gonna use them frequently. Here in the second quadrant, x is a negative number, but y is a positive number. Third quadrant, x and y are both negative numbers. In the fourth quadrant, x is a positive number, the x-axis, and y is a negative number. Notice that the x-axis is the place where y is always zero, and the y-axis is the place where x is always zero. So for example, if I give you the point minus two and five, you say, oh, that's in second quadrant, like two steps to the left and five steps up. I didn't try to make that point at scale. So let's just pretend it was right there. And then in the second quadrant, you can describe whether the six trigonometric functions are positive or negative. Sine is y over r and the cosecant is r over y. And in this quadrant, both the y and the r would be positive, so their ratio would be positive. Notice that r is always positive because it's a distance. But the tangent, cosine, cotangent, and secant, look at the cosine, is x over r, and the x coordinate is negative, and the r is positive, that makes cosine a negative number. Reciprocal of a negative number is a negative number, so secant is a negative number. Tangent is y over x, and the y being positive and the x being negative makes that ratio negative, and the reciprocal of a negative number is again negative. One more example just to show you something odd that can happen if you land your point on a coordinate axis. 
So let's take the angle 270 degrees, which is exactly three quarters of the way around the circle. Well, I'll pick a point on that ray. Let's call it zero and minus three. And then I can say, how far is zero and minus three away from the origin? By visuals, it's three steps, but by the Pythagorean theorem, I can also say zero squared plus minus three squared is squared of nine, which is three. R is three steps between the origin and the point zero minus three. So form all of your ratios. Y is minus three. Y to R is ratio negative one. X is zero. So the ratio of X to R is zero. Zero to three is zero. But you run into a problem if you try to say the ratio of Y to X. You can't say minus three divided by zero. So the tangent at that angle, 270 degrees, is undefined. That's a possibility you have to be careful about if you form a ratio and the denominator is zero. Let's take cosecant of 270. That's the reciprocal of sine, which is still okay. It's minus one. But secant of 270, the reciprocal of cosine, would be three over zero. And again, that'll be undefined. The ratio of cotangent. A tangent was undefined, minus three over zero, but cotangent would be zero over minus three. There's nothing wrong with zero divided by a non-zero number. That's just zero itself. So here the six ratios are minus one, zero, undefined, minus one, undefined, and zero. So sometimes the ratio doesn't make sense. Sometimes the ratio is not allowed, and we have to say so. We just say the ratio is undefined.